Hey everybody, this is Leslie from GoToKitchens.com. Welcome to my broadcast and you are watching Lunch with Leslie right here live on Facebook and over here live on Periscope. Let's turn this Periscope camera around. Splat gets tired of how are you guys doing today? Thank you so much for being here. It's so exciting because it is fermenting week. Now I have to tell you a little story because you know I like to tell you little stories, right? I love to tell you these little stories. Hey Sherry, thanks so much for being here. I'm so happy to see you today. So I love to tell you these little stories. So I have to tell you a little story. And that is the two minutes before noon before I hit broadcast, the two minutes before can be the absolute longest two minutes of my life or the absolute shortest two minutes of my life. If I'm prepared, I just stand here and wait to hit broadcast. I'm like, come on, it takes forever that two minutes. If I'm not prepared, it goes by so fast. Hey Karen, it's good to see you. It goes by so fast, like I blink my eye and it's time to broadcast. So I just it, I just think it's funny that that happens. So today I was prepared and it was like, longest two minutes ever. <laughs> So it is fermenting week here on GoTo Kitchens, and we are making sprout kraut today. Now, if you're my V, <laughs> you know, right? Be like, be always prepared, right? If you are in my VIP, um, if you're a VIP of GoTo Kitchens, you saw a post that I made this morning that said, "Are you curious? Are uh, uh, anybody want to take a stab at what sprout kraut is?" And so, basically, what it is is it is Brussels sprouts made into kraut. Kind of cool, right? <laughs> yes, they do need to change their eating habits. So I just, yeah, it's Brussels sprouts, sprout kraut. And so I'm going to teach you guys a recipe today that is so cool. It is super yummy. I would not share it out with you if I had not already fallen in love with it. So it is an amazing, amazing recipe. So we're going to make that today. But before we get to that, let me introduce myself. My name is Leslie because it says it on my apron. So it must, oh, you can't see it on Facebook. On Facebook, see, it says it on my apron. If it says it on my apron, it must be true. Uh, <laughs> I am the founder of Go To kitchens.com which is also on my apron go to kitchens.com uh, and I'm also the creator of kitchen anatomy a 10-step kitchen detox that is amazing and I cannot wait I cannot wait to start class in May. I'm so excited about the stinking class. I mean, I know I wrote it and everything, and I know that I'm doing like all the filming and everything, but you guys, this is good stuff, and no, you're not gonna get it anywhere else. This is like, this is like stuff that nobody tells you about your kitchen to help you fall in love with your kitchen. So, <laughs> I know, it's on the apron, so it must be true. Too bad it doesn't say like millionaire. I know, I'm so excited. What kind of bacteria? We are growing, we are doing lacto-fermentation today. So it's lacto lacto <laughs> lactobacillus uh, uh, bacteria that we're growing today. So if you are interested in my uh, in my class, right here you will see, go to kitchens.com. That's my website, first of all. You should check that out. Everything there is completely free. Go to kitchens.com. And then check out go to kitchens.com forward slash kitchen anatomy. This is the pre-sale page. This is a private page that you can only, yes, absolutely good for your digestion. This is the only way that you can find this page. It is not on my website. If you go to gotokitchens.com, you will not see Kitchen Atomy anywhere. This is private pre-sale for my Periscope and Facebook viewers. It is $99. That is going away in 14 days. In 14 days, you were right, Sonia. <laughs> in 14, I think it's four, maybe it's 13 days now. This price is going away. The price is going up to 149, and there is no bait and switch there. It will for real be 149. So please go check it out. Go to kitchens.com, Kitchen Atomy, pre sale, $99. There you go. Okay, sales pitch done. Let's make some kraut. <laughs> Let's make some sprout kraut. If you're just joining me, sprout kraut is made with Brussels sprouts. So, <sighs> Okay, if you are on Periscope, if you don't mind sharing out with your followers, I would love that. You can do it right down here in the corner. 
touch this guy on his head, share it with your followers. If you're on Facebook, you can also share live. You can share this live broadcast right now. If you want to type in questions, I can see them on Facebook in this live broadcast, and I'll be happy to answer them as we go along. Thank you guys so much for sharing out. You guys are rock stars. You always are. Always, you're permanent rock stars in my book. Permanent rock stars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, Type in on Facebook or uh, on Periscope, type in the number one if you ferment right now. And number two if you've never fermented anything in your life. Number one if you ferment. Number two if you've never fermented anything. Okay. Awesome. So <laughs> it's about an eve at, well, the twos are winning there. Okay, so some of you have never fermented anything. Awesome. This is a really simple ferment. Fermenting seems to be scary. That is a form of fermenting, actually. Barbecue wino, that is actually a form of fermentation, although you're not growing bacteria. The alcohol actually eats all the bacteria. So, yes. <laughs> okay, not able yet, but okay, awesome. All right, so right now, over on gotokitchens.com, it's on my apron, if you wanna screenshot that, screenshot that, gotokitchens.com, um, go check it out, you type in, fermenting our sauerkraut, right? And one of the first recipes that's gonna come up is basic sauerkraut. The recipe is there right now. If you want to, I would recommend that that is what you start with. Basic sauerkraut is so easy. It is so stinking easy. I just made it live yesterday on my show, Flip the Switch. Where did it go? I just made it live yesterday. <laughs> This is what I made yesterday in like 15 minutes, right? It's gonna take four weeks for it to ferment. But in 15 minutes, I made this. It's so stinking easy. So yes, it is super, super simple kraut. Go check it out, the recipe's there right now. This recipe, however, that I'm teaching you today is not on my website, so you're gonna have to take some notes <laughs> to do that. I know, did somebody say bacteria? I love it when we talk about dirty things. <laughs> We're talking, we're, we're going to do some dirty talk today. <laughs> yes, so, so simple. Go check it out. And it's so yummy. Oh my God. It is so good, right? It is so good. You're going to want to eat the whole thing, but don't do that. <laughs> dirty bacteria crowd. That's right. <laughs> dirty scope. You guys got right on that one. You're like, ooh, dirty scope. I like that. <laughs> okay. So let's make some, let's make some sprout crowd. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to get yourself a mason jar. You're going to get yourself just a plain old mason jar. I like wide mouth mason jars because they are easy to fill. If you have, if you, <laughs> what I miss, what I miss, if nothing, we're just starting the recipe. We've been goofing off this whole time. We've been goofing off for seven minutes and now we're going to get serious. Now I'm getting serious. This is my serious face. <laughs> So, yes, wide mouth jars are amazing. They don't cost any more. <laughs> you have the pea charts today. <laughs> so, yes, uh, we're going to talk about organics in just a second. I know, I'm totally serious now. If this is Brussels, it must be sprouts. Uh, <laughs> I know, didn't work, did it? So, wide mouth jars are the best. So, you're going to need yourself a really nice mason jar. These are super cheap. You can buy like a whole case of them for like eight bucks. You get like eight mason jars for eight bucks comes with the lids even. Buy yourself some mason jars. They are your best friend, especially if you're taking my class, Kitchen Atomy. Go buy a case of mason jars. You're going to want them. I'm just telling you. <laughs> it's like school supplies. <laughs> so wide mouth mason jars, you can see they say it somewhere on here. Wide mouth. See? Wide mouth mason jars. So I already have some Brussels sprouts in here because I didn't want to start like... I didn't want to start, you know, chopping and you guys have to watch me chop up all these Brussels sprouts. So I've already done a few. So here's the trick. To determine how many Brussels sprouts that you need, the best thing to do is chop them and put them in your mason jar. So you don't over make and you don't have to do like a mason jar and a half or anything like that. So chop them up and start filling your mason jar. You want to, there is a line at the top of your mason jar that says fill to here. I would recommend stopping there when you are doing fermentation because if you get too many gases built up in there, you're actually going to, um, you're actually going to have some spillage, some overflow, and we don't want that. Mind the overflow. So what I have here is an organic, I have an organic Brussels sprout. 
I actually buy most of my produce from Natural Grocers. This is a Natural Grocers commercial. They need to sponsor me. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> they need to sponsor me because I talk about them all the time. So I'm teaching a class there tonight in Longmont, by the way. If you want to learn live sprouting and you're in the uh, Fort Collins, Longmont area, please come to my class tonight at 6 o'clock. It's completely free. First 25. That's as much as you can get in that room. So natural grocers, right? Their, all of their produce is organic. I don't have to guess. I don't have to worry about, am I getting certified organic? Am I getting this? Am I getting that? <laughs> right? So Mason Charles with school supplies. Best school ever. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm totally getting off track today. So this is an organic Brussels sprout. I recommend that you buy organic, it's got a little ear. Uh, organic Brussels sprouts, right? I know my kind of school too. Um, so organic Brussels sprouts for this. Here's what happens. Organic cabbage, organic carrots, organic Brussels sprouts, whatever you're fermenting, here's what happens if you don't buy organic. Those pesticides that reside on non-organic produce actually become more available in your body when you ferment them. So if you're not eating, if you're eating traditional produce right now, that's absolutely fine. I mean, well, it's not fine. If that's all you can afford, then great. Eat your produce. I'd rather eat vegetables than not. So maybe try to buy them frozen organic if you can't get them. Anyway, so uh, that's a whole nother scope. <laughs> that's a whole nother scope. But when you're fermenting, you should always buy organic because those pesticides actually ramp up in the fermentation process and become more available in your body and you don't want that. So make sure that you're buying organic produce. By the way, Facebook, I'm pointing with my knife, don't do that, Leslie. Um, Facebook, if you guys, if we pop out, um, just come back to the next live broadcast. I will restart the broadcast. I keep having a problem with that. So how can you be sure that they're organic? Well, in my grocery store that I shop in, everything's organic, certified. They guarantee it 100%. But they will be marked. They will actually say organic. USDA certified organic is what you're looking for. A lot of people get concerned about the countries that they come from. Um, I don't. Uh, the USDA, which I don't agree with all the time, but has been there to examine these farms and different places. So yes. But when you're buying from a market that is all organic, like natural grocers, which you may not have in your area, but maybe you have something else. I know I love natural grocers too. They actually guarantee against even cross-contamination. So they are darn serious. Another great place to look is farmers markets, talking to the farmers, asking them about their practices, making sure that they're growing organically. Great place. Cheap, cheap, cheap. So Here's what we're gonna do. So this is an organic Brussels sprout. So let me move my camera down here on Facebook so you guys can see my cutting board. So I have my Brussels sprout here. I'm gonna stem it. So the method, the method for holding your knife correctly, I always like to talk about this, is grab it with your three fingers like this. You'll learn all kinds of tricks like this in my class, Kitchen Anatomy uh, and more. Um, grab it with three fingers just like that and pinch right here. This is not so hard, not, you don't have to like hang on to it for your dear life like I just did, but three fingers and a pinch at the shaft of the blade, just like that. That is gonna give you the most control of your knife when you're chopping. So just keeping that in mind, never a wet hand, ever, 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 never use your knife with a wet hand, all right? I know, it is a nice knife, thank you. <laughs> My husband spoils me. <laughs> so, I'm a food blogger, I gotta have nice knives, right? So we're gonna cut off the stem. We're gonna cut off this part right here. So we're gonna cut off the stem. Boom, that is gonna go in my garbage bowl or not, right over there. I have a garbage bowl right off camera on, on Periscope. You guys can't see it, but you can see it on Facebook. It's gonna go in my garbage bowl. I'm gonna leave all these leaves here. You notice I did not say wash your Brussels sprouts. I do not want you to wash them. And then we're gonna quarter them from the stem where I cut the stem right here. We're gonna quarter them in half first. We're gonna lay the flat side down just like that. And we're gonna run our knife through it again, all the way through. We're gonna take all of these and stick them in the mason jar. Got it? Okay, so let me do a few more because I want to fill this up. One more time, cut the stem, cut it in half stem, stem wise, so through the stem, and then quartered again. Now then, 
If you have a picky eater, and I'm gonna, I'm stuffing this jar by the way. I want them to be stuffed down in there. <laughs> so I'm stuffing it in there. If you have a picky eater and you think that they're not gonna eat a quarter of a Brussels sprout, so if you, or maybe even you, if this grosses you out to eat that fermented, there is another way to do this, and that is to cut the stem off and then run your knife through through your Brussels sprouts and make little ribbons just like you would do cabbage, just like you would do cabbage and do it that way. This makes a, almost like a little chiffonade of your, <laughs> of your Brussels sprouts like you would do an herb. This gives you a lot smaller pieces and maybe that is easier for you to eat. And I absolutely understand that. I have dealt with a texture uh, problem in my, my entire life with food, so I understand. Yes, yep. Got it? I know, almost fancy pants. I'm actually gonna fill the top of this with these. I'm just, I'm not gonna waste any Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna do a couple more, again, cause I really want them to be down in my, be down tightly in that jar. So you wanna fill that jar tightly to its fill level. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. And you don't want to wash them because you want that dirt. These uh, actually, Brussels sprouts actually grow on a stalk, so they don't grow really close to the ground, but they still have, they still get dirt on them. And you absolutely, <laughs> I know, not leaving space. They will. Once I, once I pound them up a little bit, there'll be space. So there you go. So that is my full jar. So now we're going to take that and empty it out of the jar. <laughs> I was using my jar for measurement, essentially. Gonna empty them out of the jar into a look. Oh, look how beautiful that is! Oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I love vegetables. <laughs> Me and my vegetables. So, so yes. So you're gonna empty those back into the jar, and then we're gonna add some ingredients. And the first ingredients, the first ingredient that we are going to add is this. Yes, same process, a little bit. We're not gonna pound them quite as much. So. <laughs> I do. I want to get a room with my Brussels sprouts. Um, this is not carrots. Anybody know what this is? Type it in. Quick, hurry. What is this? Anybody know? Facebook? Yes, exactly. This is turmeric or turmeric, however you say it. Yes, absolutely. It has been peeled. You guys are so stinking smart. Uh, <laughs> it has been peeled and it has been sliced thin. Now when you're working with this, see how thinly it's sliced? This is about, this is one tiny root. It was about like an inch long. It has been peeled. <laughs> I taught you that. That's awesome. I love it. Um, this is going to really up the anti-inflammatory properties of this sprout kraut. And it's going to add this amazing, amazing flavor, right? Yeah, I know, right? I would be the same way, Janie. I'd be like, I don't know how to spell that. <laughs> Jamie, Janie, I hope the angel's feeling better today, by the way. Um, yes, so this is one, one about maybe, maybe a couple inches, actually. Yeah, so it was about that long, so like an inch and a half. Um, and, and I peeled it, and I put it in here. The reason I peeled it, normally you guys know that I don't peel these kinds of roots, but the reason I peeled it is because I did not want, that peeling will get weird in the kraut and make it kind of weird and like papery. And you're like, what is that? You don't want to, uh, you don't want to eat that. So for aesthetic reasons, I actually peeled it. So yes, yeah, so we're using that. I would say it's about a tablespoon, right? About a tablespoon of that in with the Brussels sprouts. Now then, <laughs> if you have cancer or you don't ever want to get cancer, this right here is a powerhouse because these Brussels sprouts have indoles in them because they're a cruciferous vegetable. Evan always says I say it wrong, but <laughs> they have indoles in them that fight all kinds of tumor cancers that keep them from building up in your body, right? I never ate a Brussels sprout until I was diagnosed with cancer. Do not be that person. Eat your Brussels sprouts. These are amazing for you. And in this state, you're going to be eating raw Brussels sprouts, which is even mo better, plus the fermentation, plus the bacteria, plus the turmeric, plus, plus, plus powerhouse right here for your body. I know. I love Brussels sprouts too. I had to learn to eat them though. <laughs> I almost, the first time I ate them, I almost gagged. I used to play with them when I was a little girl. Mom, My mom would make them. And I was like, ooh, 
mom, can I have a Brussels sprout? And she's like, what for, honey? What do you want it for? I was like, because I want to put it in my, I loved Barbies. I want to put it in my Barbies grocery cart because it looked like cabbage, right? And it was a Barbie cabbage. And so I used to play with them like that. No joke. Ask my mom. Please, can I have a Brussels sprout to put in my Barbie's grocery cart? <laughs> it's Barbie cabbage. I'm renaming it. From this day forward, it is now known as Barbie Kraut. <laughs> All right. So we have the Brussels sprouts, a mason jar worth full of Brussels sprouts. We have about a tablespoon of turmeric. I'm not on a roll today. And now we're going to add some flavor. So the Brussels sprouts need pepper. <laughs> they need black pepper to make it activate in the body, to make it most available. I'm like crouching down over here in my Facebook broadcast, sorry. Um, but to make it activate, you actually need some black pepper. So I have chosen black peppercorns, which is basically black pepper before it's ground, right? <laughs> well, they won't die, but your body won't recognize them. Your body won't recognize the turmeric, so yes. Yes, that's what I mean. Did I say Brussels sprouts? Because I meant, yeah, I didn't mean bacteria. I meant for the turmeric. So yes, it is absolutely for the turmeric. We are going to add a teaspoon, a teaspoon of, of, uh, it's hard to tell when you're kidding. Anybody? Yeah. You were like, what? <laughs> so we're going to add a generous teaspoon of black peppercorns to this, right? You're following along. Awesome. I love it. All right, so now we have all of this in here and we're gonna use a splat and we're just gonna kind of stir this up a little bit. You don't pound it like you would pound your kraut, but we just wanna stir it up a little bit and get it start to change its cellular structure a little bit by moving it around. We've already changed it a little bit by cutting it. When you cut that, you actually change its cellular structure a little bit and it wants to weep or it wants to put out its its, its liquid. It's kind of, Think about, Think about when you, this is gross, but think about when you get cut and you bleed, right? It's actually a form of healing that cut instantly. I mean, it's releasing that, but it's also healing that area. And so same thing with vegetables. You're changing your cellular structure when you get cut. Same thing with your vegetables um, is that when you cut them, you change their cellular structure and they start releasing their juices a little bit. So I want them to do that. Plus I wanna get the turmeric in there really scrumbled up well. It is a baby splat. Baby splat, baby splat, baby splat. So I'm just going to give them a stir here for a few minutes. <clears throat> Maybe not a few minutes, like 30 seconds. And have them start releasing that juice. So we're going to set those aside. And we're going to do something else. So normally, yeah, we're scrambling. <laughs> Sorry, you must be new to me. <laughs> it is, it's a go-to kitchen's word. Scrumble is a go-to kitchen's word. So yes. <laughs> the ingredients are <clears throat> quartered Brussels sprouts, organic Brussels sprouts, enough to fill a mason jar, about a tablespoon of fresh turmeric, actually, um, actually uh, peeled and sliced in here, and a teaspoon of peppercorns, black peppercorns, right? So, whoops, yes, to scrumble, that's right. I just almost spilled my water. So this is two cups, we're probably not going to get to use all of this, but this is two cups of purified room temperature water. Normally, when you make regular kraut, <laughs> you pound it and it releases its flavor, it releases its liquids, and that's what creates the water. But Brussels sprouts, you would really change the way that they look and they wouldn't be as pretty and they would get kind of mushy and weird and you kind of want them to stay together in their little quartered pieces like this, right? So, <clears throat> so you don't really want to pound them. So you need to make a brine. And we're going to make a brine today. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I use this. When I make brines, this is actually what I use. This is an amazing sea salt. It is super big flakes. I don't know if you guys can see them. But you see that? Super big flakes. Yes, we're going to make a brine. Super big. It is salt. This is this salt right here. If you want to screenshot that, you can. <laughs> it is staying together is mo betta. I know it's so good. If you <clears throat> if you've never cooked with this, oh my gosh! Yes, regular sea salt would work just fine. I like this in my brine. It's just so good. So this is a teaspoon that I've already measured out, and we're gonna put that in the water. We're gonna use splat again, and we're gonna dissolve it. 
Now, normally I would have done this ahead of time and let it set for a little while. Um, I did not do that with this. I'm sorry. How is salt different than uh, fermenter starter? So the salt is gonna, the salt actually is gonna help the little cabbage Barbie Brussels sprouts <laughs> break down um, and is gonna give us a true lacto fermentation. If you're using whey or you're using other starters, you could use like a kraut starter if you wanted to, but this is gonna, this is gonna give you a nice pure form. So <laughs> I know splat, splat needs, <laughs> that's so funny, splat needs scuba gear. <laughs> Here, I'll let him breathe. Take a breath, Splat. Okay, that's enough. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get turned in. Somebody's gonna turn me in for trying to drown Splat. Splat murder. All right, so you can see how fast <laughs> that melted in there. This is why, <laughs> yes, it does draw out the moisture for sure. So, hi, Dad. Hi, Dad, I love you so much. I'm so happy that you're here. Uh, hi, Mom, I love you too. I'm sure you're here too. Um, so this is two cups of brine, basically, right? So it's just salty water. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Thank you. I love you too so much. I miss you. Um, so I'm going to just go back in here and stir these again. You're not going to get that glistening like you get, um, like you get when you pound out kraut. If you've ever made kraut, I know a lot of you haven't, but you're not going to get that glistening that you get. <clears throat> but it really does help, it does help them release a little bit to relax. Yeah, to relax a little bit. <laughs> All right, so here's my mason jar. I'm gonna essentially take my hands, <laughs> not essentially, I'm gonna take my hands and I'm gonna start filling this jar and I'm gonna try to mix in my turmeric in there and get some of those peppercorns throughout. So good. And I'm going to keep mashing it down with my hands. This is why a wide mouth. Can you imagine if this was a small mouth? I'd be like, eh, I can't get it. Yeah. So <laughs> wide mouth. This is uh, this was about a teaspoon. Yep. And you can, if you don't want to use fresh, you could use powder. Just know it's really going to change the color of this. Um, so yes, just keeping that in mind. Where are those peppercorns? Give me some of those peppercorns. I want those in there. So just being thoughtful as you're filling the, drawer, the jar, just to get it down in there, you know, nice and, you know, different flavors and different places so that it goes throughout. <clears throat> I tell you, making this stuff is a lot of work. <laughs> Hi, thanks for being here. All right, so we have those in there. I'm going to put the rest of my peppercorns just right on top. They will make them their way down in there. Oh, I want to get all that turmeric out of there. We're just going to keep pressing it down. Now then, here is one of my favorite flowers. Flowers? Here's one of my flowers? Here's one of my favorite flavors. <laughs> and that is to use these dried chilies. Now, these are so amazing. If you do not want it to be hot, do not do this. This is going to make these really, really hot. <laughs> Dad, you were on yesterday? I totally missed it. I missed it. Yeah. So these are going to, I was so busy yesterday. I got to go watch replay. So this is, <laughs> you can't do hot. Okay. If you can't do hot, don't do this. If you don't have dried chili peppers, you could use cayenne flakes. That would be absolutely fine. I just like these. These are actually going to go down in my brine and I'm going to rehydrate them super fast just a little bit before I put them in here because I'm gonna to try to stuff them down the side of my jar. And you can use one, you can use three. You could totally do cumin. Yeah, you could do whatever spices you want, absolutely. It's not gonna mess with the ferment. It's just gonna give you these amazing flavors. So how many red pepper flakes? I would say this is gonna be super hot. This is gonna be like scorching hot. So <laughs> I would say probably like a teaspoon of red pepper flakes would probably give you a really nice good flavor. Um, you know what? I do not remember what kind of chilies they are. I bought them at the farmer's market and I can't remember what they were and I knew somebody was going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually Brussels sprouts. These are not, this is not cabbage. So we're going to take these. I've just slightly rehydrated them and I'm going to try to stuff them down the sides here. They're going to break open with my fingers so that they're down in there. You could do fresh chilies as well. Actually, you could do fresh chilies and then eat them. That would be amazing. This has the seeds in and everything. 
So I'm just quartering around. Ah, oh, it's hot. It's burning my finger. No kidding. <laughs> These are so hot. I used them in a Thai recipe not long ago. Whew. Wow. Very hot. I left the stems and everything in there. The more plant organics that are in here, the better off we are. And I have messy fingers. All right. Everybody good? <laughs> I just made you happy. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Now look at this gorgeous jar. Look at that. Who doesn't want to eat that? I totally want to eat it right now. Yeah, the more bacteria, the better. So now I'm going to take this and top it off with my brine. I told you we wouldn't use the whole two cups. I'm going to top that off with my brine. Kind of keep pressing it down in there. There we go. Look at that. So pretty. It's so pretty. I love it. I love it. I do. I love it. <laughs> I know, use lots of soap, right? <laughs> yes, it will get spicy. This is going to be spicy, even though it doesn't look like it's way far in there. It's going to get in that brine, and it's going to be super spicy. But look at these gorgeous chunks of turmeric in here, and the black peppercorns, and the peppers. It's just really lovely. Gorgeous ferment. I love it. Did I put my weight in it? Yeah, sort of. Um, so I'm right to the fill line. You can see right here, my liquid is right to the fill line. So that's great. I know it's so pretty, so pretty. So this is going to ferment the same amount of time that you are going to ferment, um, that you are going to ferment like a sauerkraut. This sauerkraut, where is it? This sauerkraut that I made yesterday on Flip the Switch. By the way, if you watch that show, look at all that great liquid I have in there already. Ooh, I'm so excited about it. Um, <laughs> so yes, it's going to be the same amount of time, four to six weeks, same conditions, same everything, just, you know, in a, in a space where it's not disrupted. So you don't want it disrupted a lot. You're going to want to burp it every once in a while. When you burp it and you start getting bubbles from the top, uh, you know, from the bottom to the top, that actually means that it's ready. It's going to change colors a little bit. It's not going to be bright green like this. It's going to get like a little pale. Um, and then if you want to taste it, you can taste it along the way. Now, because you used a brine, you are pretty much covering your vegetables all the way to the top. Um, I would just make sure to wash my hands <laughs> if you want to do this in, a, in like 10 days from now. Um, you don't have to be so picky about it, but in 10 days from now, uh, or seven, 10 days, whatever, I would wash my hands really good and come back in here and just poke everything back down in there just to make sure that everything is staying below that water level. You could use a weight if you use uh, kraut weights or something like that. They actually have weights that you can put in here. If you use something like that, a river rock, anything like that is fine. Then you don't have to check it at all. But you'd want to burp it every once in a while just to make sure you don't get any leakage. <laughs> so this is going to be a different flavor, if you can believe it, than sauerkraut, especially with all these spices in here. It's going to be this amazing, amazing, yeah, just open the lid. It'll go, pshh, and you can close it again, <laughs> just like a soda or something. Same thing, yeah. So in four to eight weeks, we'll look at it again. We'll actually look at it in four weeks. We'll look at it again. I'll show you. It'll almost be time for another fermenting week at that point, um, and I'll show you again. There you go. You can totally eat the turmeric pieces. They're going to be nice and mushy in there. It's going to be, <laughs> right? It might smell like that as well. Um, but it's going to be nice and mushy in there, and it's going to be really, really, really yummy. You'll, I mean, I can imagine I've done all types of fermented turmeric, and it's just so stinking good. It comes out really, really good. So now then, <laughs> let's talk about something serious, <laughs> and that is this. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, that will help you a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. It does smell like that. Stink is good. So if you get mold on the top of this, if you see black or fuzzy mold, you know what mold looks like, right? It's fuzzy. If you get black or fuzzy mold, get rid of it. You're done. Unless you're a, unless you are an expert in fermenting. If you fermented, <coughs> excuse me, a ton of things, then you don't need to worry about it. You know what to do, right? You know what to do. But if this is your first time fermenting, you have mold, you just toss it. Get rid of it and start over. You've wasted a few Brussels sprouts, that's all. So I think I just sucked some pepper down or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> so um, yes, <coughs> excuse me. Yes, black, 
fuzzy, like fuzzy mold, you know, like mold that gets on top of something and it's fuzzy. Mm -mm. Do not eat that. Do not stir it in. Do not go, oh, that's a form of bacteria. I can eat that. Do not eat it. You will get sick, sick, sick. Everybody crystal clear? Crystal clear. All right. <laughs> it's going to smell funky. <laughs> Let's just be crystal clear about this as well. It is going to smell like somebody farted when you open this. And I said fart. Yes, I did. That's what it's going to smell like when you open it. Yeah, don't don't eat it. Yeah, it's gross. It does. It's really stinky. My dad is like, like crap. <laughs> it's totally, yes, it is going to smell like a fart when you open it. That is okay. If you open it and it smells like putrid vegetables, like rotting, nasty, like, you know that smell? If it smells like that, get rid of it. Do not eat it. <laughs> that is bad. <laughs> Don't be brave. <laughs> Just get rid of it and start over. All right. Um, the things that would cause it to mold is one, not enough salt will cause it to mold. So if you use too little salt, that will actually cause it to mold. If you use too much salt, it won't ferment. So this is actually two cups of two cups of purified water with one, uh, excuse me, uh, one tablespoon of uh, sea salt, and that's like the perfect mixture for the brine for this. Yes, sea salt is best in my opinion. I'm not gonna tell you to use anything else because I wouldn't use anything else. So, <laughs> yeah, and that's fine. You don't have to, Sherry. If you can get through eating the stems, you can absolutely just quarter them and put them right in here. I actually don't like the stems. I don't, I, the stems actually have tons of nutrients and you can eat them totally, completely, absolutely eat them. But yes, yeah. Uh, I do not have, I have a good kimchi recipe. If you go to catch.me and forward slash go to kitchens and type in kimchi in the search, you will see a whole episode on kimchi. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jen's like, dang, now I have to, <laughs> Jen's always on a quest for <laughs> organic vegetables. So, uh, 12 ounces of sprout fits perfect. Yes, I think so. Yep. Yeah. So those are the things. And then the other thing that might cause mold is that you don't have enough brine covering your vegetables. I'm yeah. If you don't have enough, if you have exposed vegetables, those can actually mold as well. So you want to be conscious of that, making sure that you have enough brine in there. So there you go. Sprout kraut. Eventually this will be on my website this week. <laughs> this week I am doing good to get basic kombucha and sauerkraut up. And the reason is, is because we are filming Kitchen Atomy starting Wednesday, uh, starting tomorrow. We're actually filming the episodes of Kitchen Atomy. There's 10 classes. We're filming 10 classes in two days. So yes, uh, the, uh, by the end of the week, there will be a kombucha recipe. So yeah. Yes, you can absolutely buy weights that fit. Yeah. So exciting. Yes, you could absolutely eat all the vegetables. So I was going to say that. So thank you for reminding me, actually. So if you're new to eating fermented foods, you want to go slow. I cannot stress this enough. Do not, do not eat half this jar after this is ready because you're going to want to because it's going to taste that amazing. Do not do that. If you do that, you will have the poops. And I'm not talking about the poops like, oh, I got a poop. It's like, I got a poop. I mean, and it's serious. So you will get the poops. So just go slow. And that's only if you eat too many. Don't be like scared that you're going to get the poops if you eat fermented food. That's not the case. That's just if you, if you just try to eat too much of it. So if you go in and you're like, oh, this is so good. And you just keep eating it, eating it, eating it. It's probably going to clean you out really well. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> So if you don't want that to happen, maybe you do, but if you don't, then don't eat a lot of this. A tablespoon to two tablespoons maximum, maximum and build up. Yes. You could add onions. Absolutely. You could add whatever you wanted to in here. Nothing's going to hurt the ferment. So yes, a very good laxative for sure. If you have traveler's butt, it's a great way to get rid of that. <laughs> I do. I have a whole guide to bean sprouting on my on my website. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so for children, uh, think about that they're smaller humans. So the smaller the human, the less they get. <laughs> Does that make sense? So their systems are different. So you want to be careful. Yep. <laughs> What's traveler's butt? <laughs> All right. 
right. Hold on. You guys stay with me on Periscope. You guys on Facebook, thank you so much for watching. Go to kitchens.com. There'll be a link to our website right below. You can go figure out how to make basic kraut. You can rewatch this to make sprout kraut. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I will be back here tomorrow. Tomorrow we're making Rejuvalac, which is an incredible tonic that's going to blow your mind. That's fermented food. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Stay with me, Periscope. Bye, you guys. All right, sorry. It'll kick me off of Facebook. So, uh, so traveler's butt is, <laughs> Robin calls it baguette butt. I call it traveler's butt. So every time we travel, our systems get thrown off. And so not that we have delicate systems or anything, but we have very specific ways that we eat. When we travel, we don't get to eat like that. So typically, uh, we get, <laughs> we have so many terms for it. I call it traveler's butt. We call it poopy butt. And Robin calls it baguette butt. So... <laughs> And the term baguette butt comes from we travel in Europe a lot. Um, <laughs> we travel in Europe, and especially when we're in France and in Italy, um, we eat a ton of baguette. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, probably every day. Like I'm not used to eating bread every single day, but I eat like baguette every single every single day. And um, yeah. So it's usually our lunch. We have a little picnic lunch somewhere beautiful. It's like the way, this is how we like to travel. So we're not big on eating out in restaurants and all that kind of stuff. Although I'm a foodie, we actually pack a picnic every single day and have a beautiful picnic somewhere in a museum, in a park, uh, just sitting on the street curb, wherever, and have lunch that way when we're in Europe. And we eat a lot of bread. So yeah, baguette butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so funny. You're coming next time? Okay, awesome. Love to have you there. <laughs> Somebody the other day uh, suggested that I start a go-to kitchens tour company. And uh, when we go to Europe to start a tour company where I take people with me and travel through the, the countries that we've already been to and show them my favorite foods and my favorite, you know, this, this is how we travel, right? Real food travel. I know it would be a lot of fun. It would be expensive though. I mean, a lot of people freaked out at Kitchen Atomy being $99 and you can imagine what like a 10 day trip to Italy would be. <laughs> so you would love to go. Yeah, I, it's, it would be, yeah, it would be really, really a lot of fun. So I, <laughs> Jen, I'm totally doing that. I'm totally coming to visit you in Illinois and we're going to do that for sure. So I know big bucks hundred times that maybe so yeah more than 50 yeah definitely man if I could get us all to Europe on 50 bucks I would pay for it <laughs> I'd be like it's free come with me <laughs> come visit me Sherry's like no come visit me <laughs> I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a baguette today <laughs> I know uh yeah but then you get baguette but see and we have to we would have to pack fermented food so we didn't get bag baguette but <laughs> oh my goodness. So tomorrow, tomorrow on uh, Lunch with Leslie, we are making, we are making Rejuvalac. If you know what Rejuvalac is, type in one. I bet I get like one. If you know what Rejuvalac, you may because you've already looked it up. <laughs> I know. One. Oh, Aaron knows what Rejuvalac is. Awesome. I knew you'd know. Fermenting queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nope. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Okay. So Rejuvalac is actually a great plant-based starter. And so tomorrow I'm going to teach you how to make this. That's so cool. Can you see the bubbles? See the bubbles popping up? That's exactly what needs to happen. Look at all those bubbles. Whoo. Very effervescent. And it is not even anaerobically. It is exposed to the oxygen and it has that much fizz in it. It's crazy, right? I know. Very intriguing. I know. What the heck is that? <laughs> so tomorrow on Go To Kitchens, we're going to make Rejuvalac. Now I've already made some ahead. I know it's the bubbly. It's the good stuff. Um, anaerobic means that it is, oh man, I get this. Hold on. Erin, help me out here. Anaerobic means that it is done without oxygen. Aerobic and yeah, dang. Thank you. <laughs> no air. Yes. Thank you. All right. You guys know. I always screw it up. My dyslexic brain does not like that word without oxygen. Yes. So we're doing, this has oxygen. <laughs> I know, right? Who knew? 
<laughs> so thank you. So yes, uh, so that does that ha that gets oxygen and still is that bubbly. So Rejuvelac is an amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> so we're gonna make that tomorrow. I'm gonna teach you how to make that. It is the key ingredient to the nut yogurt that we are making, along with these babies, cashews. We are gonna make we are gonna make yogurt um, on Thursday. We're gonna make yogurt, and then on Friday, I'm gonna teach you how to grow your own scoby. I know. So last time I made yogurt, everybody's like, "But I don't eat dairy. I don't want to eat it because of the dairy." Learn how to make cashew yogurt. And I'm like, "Okay, fine." <laughs> so, so we are um, we are actually making Rejuvelac tomorrow to teach you that, so that you can make your own <laughs> you can make your own yogurt, nut yogurt. Yeah. Bye, Janie. Love ya. You think you waited too long on the SCOBY? Maybe not, actually. I mean, SCOBYs can get really thick. Um, so, yes. I mean, this SCOBY, let me show you this SCOBY. This is the example that I'll use on Friday. Um, but this is, this is, I actually grew this SCOBY. I'm so proud. It has, it has a baby underneath it, actually. See that right there? This is the mother. That's the baby. Um, I actually grew this SCOBY. Um, and it took about, this is like an eight week old SCOBY. <laughs> it's really, I mean, it took a long time. I just put it in refrigeration like two days ago so that it would stop the fermentation process and stop growing a little bit. <laughs> You're freaked out a little bit. I know it's, it's alive. It's alive. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. So, but yeah, so I actually, this is a beautiful SCOBY. Yeah, that's fine. You can leave, you can leave it there. Look at that. Look how beautiful and clean. Oh, <gasps> crap. Oops. I just, <laughs> I just poured kombucha on you guys. I was trying to show you. <laughs> Slosh. It's all over the floor. Sticky mess. Okay. Here, I'll show you this way. See that scoby in there? Beautiful. I know. <laughs> no, that's okay. Look at that gorgeous scoby. Smells so good, too. Tastes really good too. This is a great, this is going to be a great starter for kombucha, but I'm going to teach you how to do that. I'm going to teach you how to do, how to grow a scoby. And that one is grown. That one is absolutely grown from scratch. So yes, I know I have this huge mess on my floor right now. So excuse me just a second while I put this towel down and just get this wet up. <laughs> it's live. It's live TV, right? Can you sweeten it? Uh, well, it already, uh, kombucha already has a lot of sugar in it. Um, so, oh, you mean add it to, yeah, if it's already gotten to a vinegary state, it's best to take your SCOBY out and put it in some fresh kombucha and use a fresh starter. So like get some GT's original or something like that. So yeah, thank you. Yes, that is what SCOBY means. Yeah. No, I'm not scoping. I'm, I'm down to scoping once a day and only Monday through Friday. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only Monday through Friday, once a day. Toodoo. Yeah. Change my schedule. I'll keep refining it. Yeah. No, I've not. <laughs> I've not. I mean, as I get further into fermenting, it's like a freaking science lab in here. So, you have a question off topic. Shoot, let's hear it. Turn my notification up. I don't know what that means. Bye. Thank you for being here, Karen. <laughs> I know. It's like it's like a stinking science lab in here, literally. Sometimes stinking. So <laughs> you miss it all the time. Ah, dang. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Woo! It smells like kombucha in here, I can tell you that. Yeah, too. I don't I can't eat a lot of vinegar either in things. So I'm with you on that one. Yogurt, kefir. I haven't tried kefir either. Booch, June. I haven't. Jun, June. I don't know how you pronounce it. I haven't tried that either. Yeah. So learning as I go and teaching you as I perfect it. <laughs> that's how, that's how, that's how fermenting has gone for me is I learn as I go. And once I perfect it, then I start teaching you guys. So, <laughs> okay. Awesome. <laughs> Sherry, <laughs> that's your question. You're so funny. I adore you. I just, I really do. I adore you. Um, 
<laughs> so I don't, I, I think that my brain um, actually works really uniquely because of my learning disability. And I'm not being funny. I'm being completely honest here. I have a severe learning disability. I am incredibly dyslexic. And so <laughs> I can totally multitask. Yep. Um, but because of my dyslexia and trying to overcome that and how my brain works because of it, I think has made me an incredibly focused adult, right? <laughs> incredibly focused adult. And, um, and it's, and I have to tell you it is, yeah, we made Kavas one week for sure. It's really good. So I think that, I think that that's what it, I think it has a lot to do with that and that, and I am incredibly passionate about what I'm doing. I don't think that I could be this focused if I didn't love, 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 love what I'm doing. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I am I am so passionate. Um, <laughs> I am so passionate about what I'm doing. I'm so passionate about helping people um, change their lives and helping people have light bulb moments in their health, you know, because one of the one of the most affected things that ever happened to me in my entire life is when I was diagnosed with cancer and I had a light bulb moment in my health that said something you have cancer for, you know, your body created cancer for a reason and you need to find that reason. And so thank you so much. That's very sweet of you to say. Um, and so because of that, um, I think that my passion for helping others have these, these reality moments before they get cancer, before they have these things happen, you know, you don't have to get cancer to live like you have cancer. <laughs> I know that sounds nuts, right? That's like the nuttiest thing to say, but eat like you have cancer. <laughs> eat like you have cancer that you're trying to get out of your body. This is like one of the best, this is one of the biggest principles that I could teach you is that even though you don't have cancer, although we all do have cancer, it just depends on our body turning the genes on and off. Anyway, didn't mean to freak you out, but eat like you have cancer. Eating like that is going to change your life. Using that mindset to never wanting, Sherry, you have it really, really strong too. Sherry, you have a, you have a deep seated I don't ever want to have cancer. I don't know. I don't think it's a fear. I just think it's a genuine, I don't want it. And so you, you, you're, you're motivated to make changes, right? And so living like you have it is so huge. I missed two big comments there and I'm so sorry. If you want to type them in, I'll try to read them quickly. So yeah, I mean, yeah, your dad had cancer. We all know somebody. We will, every single one of us will be touched by cancer at some point in our life. Either we know somebody, and usually it's somebody that is near and dear to us that has it, or you're gonna get it, or whatever. So, right, every single one of us, that is the statistic. It's almost 50-50, <laughs> one and one. They're about to change the statistic, and one and one, you know, so one and two, excuse me, that's, I didn't say that correctly. One and two people will have cancer. So that's 50 freaking percent of us that will have cancer. Not happening, not happening on my watch. I, I wanna see that statistic go the other way. I can't wait till we say three and one and four, you know, one and four, one and five, one and six, right? <laughs> As we move that statistic and we can do that, we can do that if we change our perspective about how we take care of our bodies. That's right, not on my watch. <laughs> so yeah, not on my watch. So. Absolutely. And I, you know, helping people have these light bulb moments of, you know, oh my gosh, I don't want that to happen to me. You know, instead of having a knee jerk reaction when it does happen, having a lifestyle that prevents it from happening in the first place. Bingo, bingo bongo. How easy is that? It's a few simple changes. It's not even hard. It is a few simple changes. So, so if you like fermenting week, <laughs> hey Dana, uh, if you like fermenting week, right? Light bulb moments, ding. Um, if you like fermenting week, I have a new class that I'm going to launch and it's gonna be completely free. This first class that we put out is the $99 class and I would encourage all of you to go check it out. Go to kitchens.com, Kitchenatomy. The only way that you can find that price, the only way that you can get that price is by going to this link if you wanna screenshot that. Go to kitchens.com, let me put it closer. Go to kitchens.com 
forward slash kitchenatomy, right? That's the only way that you can get that price for $99. This is our first class in the GoTo Kitchens Academy. Our second class, I'm already writing it right now. Our second class is going to be called, you ready? Ferment your brains out. <laughs> Screenshot, thank you so much, thank you. Yep. <laughs> So our next class is going to be called Ferment Your Brains Out. It's going to be completely free. It is going to break down in detail these processes so you don't have to get it in like a 10-minute scope. It's going to have written details. It's going to have ingredient lists. It's going to have different ideas that, that like, you know, here's a basic ferment and here's the all the other things you can put in it to ferment, right? So, so that is going to be our absolutely free class and it's called Ferment Your Brains Out and I can't wait to start working on it. Yeah, <laughs> but the first class is Kitchen Anatomy. Um, yes, Kitchen Anatomy. There you go. Yay! I'm so excited. Dana's in the class. Sherry's in the class. Victoria's in the class. Who else is in the class? If you're already signed up for Kitchen Anatomy, sign up. I mean, if you're not, sign up. Sorry, Edison's barking. Somebody's at my door. Um, that's just too bad. They'll have to wait. So <laughs> if you are not in, I mean, if you're in Kitchen Anatomy, type in the number one. Type in the number one if you are if you are already in Kitchen Anatomy. You'll do the second class. Awesome, I love to have you there. One, Sherry's in there, woohoo! Yay, tell me your name, De it's not Deanna. Is it Deanna? Dana's in there, awesome. <laughs> you will email, awesome. Dina, Dina, sorry, Dina, Dina, Dina. I will, I will never forget now. Hi Scarlett, thanks for being here. <laughs> awesome, good. Yeah, second class is completely free. Dina, 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 Dina. That's my dyslexic brain. So, <laughs> thank your dad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And Dana too, yes. So, the second class, I'm not sure actually how long it's going to be. It's going to launch probably sometime um, mid-summer. And I'm not sure how long it's going to be because <laughs> I haven't written it yet. Dean with an A. Got it. <laughs> Dina, 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 Dina. <laughs> yeah, so I haven't even written it yet. I just have the concept. <laughs> it's just conceptual at this point. So yes, absolutely free though. All right, you guys, there you go. Go to kitchens.com forward slash kitchen anatomy. Please go check out pre-sale. I'd love to have you in class. <laughs> it's a title, I know. <laughs> So, yes, I can tell you. Thank you for asking. There actually, if you go to this website, go to kitchens.com forward slash kitchen anatomy, there is actually a 20 minute webinar there that you can watch. Uh, <laughs> yes, conceptual. Um, there is a 20 minute webinar that will, in a PowerPoint presentation and everything that will really give you all the information that you want to know. But I will briefly tell you the 10, it's a 10 step kitchen detox. So it's called Kitchen Anatomy 10 Step Kitchen Detox. And Kitchen Anatomy is a, um, it is an absolute detox of the kitchen. In fact, Dana from Whole Health Dana has written part of this. She's actually giving us, she's being very generous and giving us a free ebook that she's written, especially for this class, um, about how to get the toxins out from underneath your sink. She's an expert in this field. I trust she's my guru for cleaning products and stuff and, and health products and makeups and hairs and all that kind of stuff. She's amazing and she's written, it is awesome. Trust me, it's really awesome. So she's written an entire ebook just for this class. She's partnered with me and written an entire, and you get that with the class. So that's one thing. And she and I are gonna do an interview talking about different toxins and talking about ways to get it out. So there is an actual detox of the kitchen. However, <laughs> the majority of the class is about detoxing your mindset about your kitchen. So we, we, we think of our kitchen as a workspace, right? And sometimes you don't want to go to work. Kind of going to work is kind of stinky. I don't want to do dishes. I don't want to take the trash out. I don't want to cook. I don't want to shop. I don't want to do any of that. No, you cannot. It comes with the class only. Um, I don't want to do any of that stuff. And so, um, so yeah, so it's absolutely a detox of a mindset and it's 10 simple detailed tasks <laughs> about how to detox your mindset. So it's Kitchen Anatomy, 10 step kitchen detox. I am the complete creator of it other than the ebook. 
<laughs> um, I'm the complete com uh, creator of it. It will have a textbook, it has videos, and it has uh, worksheets for you. So yes, 10 videos, 10, 10 chapters of a textbook, and 10 worksheets to get you in a frame of mind where you can't wait to be in your kitchen. You, at the end of this class, you will be excited about doing dishes and taking the garbage out. I promise. <laughs> The class starts uh, May 16th. We're in pre-sale right now. <laughs> Let's talk offline and we'll talk about it, Sherry. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Amy. Thanks for being here so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can. Absolutely. Class starts May 16th. It is a, um, it is, it's not self-guided. You have plenty of guidance, but it is at your own pace. It's self-paced. So there's no like set times. This is when class is and you need to be there. Um, this is a self-paced class. So if it takes you 10 weeks to do it, great. If it takes you 10 months to do it, whatever. If it takes you 10 years, it is yours to keep with a 100% money back guarantee. So yeah, absolutely. All right, you guys, I'm going to fly out. Oh, one hour, one hour scope. Hashtag one hour scope. Go make yourself some sprout kraut. <laughs> so good. It's going to be so good. <laughs> Love you guys so much. Have an amazing day. I'll be back here tomorrow teaching you how to make a really amazing health tonic uh, <laughs> called, <laughs> called, you're welcome, you're welcome. Love you guys. Thank you. Um, how, called Rejuvelac. And it's going to be a great starter for all kinds of things. But we are going to use it for yogurt on Thursday. And on Friday, I'm going to teach you how to make your own SCOBY, to grow your own SCOBY. So Bacteria Week marches on. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Uh, see you tomorrow for sure. If not, I'll see you over on the VIP page. VIP is absolutely free. Go to kitchens.com. You sign up VIP access. You get a link to a private Facebook page that is just for go to kitchens VIPs and you get a free ebook, how to fall in love with your kitchen and yourself. So I will see you guys tomorrow or over on VIP or over on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. <laughs> Bye. Love you guys. You're welcome, Sherry.